From NPR, this is World Cafe. Hey, I am Kaleo. What's going on, YouTube? We have a very cool session with Rhiannon Giddens, who added to her impressive list of accomplishments earlier this year when the Grammy winner and MacArthur Genius Grant recipient won the 2023 Pulitzer Prize in Music as co-composer for the opera Omar. Giddens joins me today to talk about her new album, which is called You're the One. It's a departure from her earlier material, a chance to expand her sonic palette, incorporating jazz, blues, Cajun, and rock elements, and it's also her first album to feature all original compositions. So the session you're going to hear today, because it's on YouTube and uh, complying with copyrights and whatnot, you're going to hear short snippets of the songs, but a chance for you to go down the rabbit hole later. In the meantime, enjoy our session with Rhiannon Giddens. We get started with the performance of You, Louisiana. Anna Man here on World Cafe.
Recorded live in Wilmington, it's Rhiannon Giddens with You Louisiana Man. It's a song featured on her new solo album, You're the One. Rhiannon Giddens is my guest today on World Cafe. I am Kaleo. Hey, thanks so much for being here. Welcome back. Hey, thanks for thanks for having me. It's so cool to be back. So can't wait to talk about the album, but I'd be remiss if I didn't mention first, it's not every day we have a Pulitzer Prize winner join the show. So congrats about that. Thank you. It's a little bit crazy, but thank you. <laughs> yeah, of course. It, it's, it, it has to be. Uh, Omar won the 2023 Pulitzer Prize, the Music Prize. It's an opera about enslaved people brought to North America from Muslim countries. Um, obviously, a lot of significance to you. What does this award win mean? Does it mean something different than any other award that you might win? Yeah, it's really interesting because awards are funny. You know, I've always been slightly side-eyeing awards. Like, what does it mean? You know, I'm not any better than anybody else. Like, what, like, yeah, do, am, it doesn't like fundamentally change who I am as a person that I have this trophy. No, but what it does is in different realms. It just lets me know that my music is making an impact. Yeah. You know, that it's reaching people. And it, particularly with the Pulitzer, which, you know, is just what they're looking for is the thing that I do. It, do I think Omar's the best opera ever written? No. Do I... Do I think it'll be in the canon 20 years from now, 100 years from now? I have no idea, mm -hmm. but I think it is saying something important and making an important cultural comment and impact. And yeah, I'm always appreciative of, of, of when people say, you know, here's a thing. Thanks for doing what you do. Um, but the Pulitzer is kind of special <laughs> because yeah, I'm, sitting up, I'm sitting up there next to like <laughs> these freaking people going to war zones. And I'm just like, oh, my God, you know, um, what does this mean? I don't know. But uh, it, it felt good. For those just joining us, it's World Cafe. We're talking with Rhiannon and Giddens. The new album is You're the One. You're never afraid, uh, certainly not afraid, uh, to switch things up. And, you know, this album is different in a lot of ways. This is your first album with uh, all, pretty much all, original songs. And it certainly has a different feel than previous albums. Can you talk about your sort of aims with You're the One? You know, it's really just to explore different sides of myself as an artist that, you know, have been kind of put on the back burner because of this message that I that I've been really um just feeling and trying to to put out there the stories the history you know and so I had been writing these songs that have been exploring different sides of the music um that that I love inspired by people like Dolly Parton Aretha Franklin and, you know it's kind of in a companion piece to my first solo record um Tomorrow's My Turn which was all covers and it was all covers by, you know, of, of music either written by or associated with, you know, women that I really admired. And so a lot of these songs are originals, but written sort of not not necessarily as much, you know, I'm not trying to sound like these these artists, but it's kind of more like my creative response, you know, to sitting and listening to a butt ton of do early Dolly Parton. And then I wrote something <laughs> called If You Don't Know How Sweet It Is, Get Out of My Kitchen. You know, it's like these kinds of explorations in in these different also different kinds of popular music you know um so it's it's been really fun uh to to get out there with with the record it's so funny because i you know i wanted to talk about how the, the i know it is a change of pace there's some love songs there's some fun songs and the one that i specifically wanted to call out you sort of already answered which is you know if you don't know how sweet it is it was it's just it just paints such a beautiful picture. And I was wondering what some of the origins were. And I guess Dolly maybe had a little bit of a part to do with that. Yeah, I had it was actually a poem. This poem started because somebody that I was professionally working with decided they wanted to go do something else. And I got really upset, you know, and this is before I kind of have this mode of like people go do the things that they need to do. And, you know, that just let them go. And it's fine. You know, it's yeah. not personal. But in that moment, I was like, well, if you don't know how sweet it is, get out of my kid. And I wrote this little <laughs> poem and then I was listening to a lot of Dolly and I was like "Ooh, this sounds like this could be a Dolly song you know especially her early stuff is like super spicy yeah. you know like some of that the, like the first couple records I was just kind of listening to on repeat and just like this is it I got to do this you know I got to make this song and it was it was so much fun yeah well let's take a little bit of a listen to it uh, from the album you're the one it's Rhiannon Giddens with if you don't know how sweet it is I heard you whine the other day Get on out of my kitchen. We're talking with Rhiannon Giddens here on World Cafe. Uh, you just heard the song, If You Don't Know How Sweet It Is. Um, when you're writing a song with some joy or something with levity, 
do you find that is a different type of challenge than one when you're trying to tell something that has a lot of uh, gravity to it? Is it a different approach or, or do you handle it sort of the same way? It's really, it's an interesting question. I've never really considered it. And, you know, obviously a lot of my original work has been tied to slavery, which is, you know, not the most joyful subject in the world. I mean, I right. find strength and, you know, sort of uh, how do you thrive in, in, in these difficult situations when I write these songs, but they're not like, you know, bops. <laughs> I mean, so <laughs> no. uh, like some of these songs was a way for me to explore also the, the lighter side um, of, of myself. And I've always been drawn to musical theater, to vaudeville. You know, I'm really fascinated with wordplay. I'm like a huge fan of of Stephen Sondheim, a huge fan of Tom Lehrer, <laughs> who was like this incredibly comedic uh, yet satirical songwriter. And so I kind of start with wordplay sometimes, you know, like too little, too late, too bad. I mean, it's all kind of coming out of this. So it's a lot easier to write a, a, a funny song when you start with wordplay. We're talking with Rhiannon Giddens. The new album is You're the One. There are songs on You're the One that, that um, definitely are poignant and have real gravity. And one of those you've brought a live performance for today, Another Wasted Life. Um, it's about Khalif Browder, who was wrongfully convicted and placed in solitary confinement for nearly two years before he died by suicide. Um, why did you want to write this song and, and, and why did you want it on this album? Well, I didn't have a choice of writing the song. I, I like, for some reason, this story just like struck me in a certain way. And I was in a certain sort of mode of songwriting at, at the time. And when this album kind of concept came, I knew that I wanted to make sure that song was kind of in the center of it. And my previous album with a lot of original material on it, not all, but, you know, the first time I really put out my own songs, which Freedom Highway, and yeah. a lot of the songs of that are dealing with quite heavy material. And so this is kind of an opposite way of, of, of looking at it. It's like you have one really super important like mission song and then it's surrounded by all of these fun songs, you know? So it kind of, it, it's harder to ignore that way. You know what I mean? Like when you oh. have a bunch, it's kind of like, it's a wash and you're kind of like, okay, like, okay, I get it. It's, I get it. <laughs> like uh, America, like it's been through some rough history. Whereas this kind of really makes a very specific statement about a very specific person, which then kind of illustrates the industry in a whole, you know? And so and I, and I'm also partnering with um, the Pennsylvania Innocence Project, well, par Innocence Projects in general, but particularly the Pennsylvania Innocence Project in order to raise awareness of the issue of, un you know, wrongly incarcerated people, which is, it's a huge problem all over the country. Yeah, and the video for it, you know, it, it is it features, I, I'm not sure how, how many people. 22. Yeah. That were wrongfully convicted and had their convictions overturned. So this, I mean, obviously very important. One other thing about the song that I I find interesting is that the music, um, particularly the piano, adds this tension and, you know, sort of driving feeling that, uh, I don't want to call it discomfort because it's not dissonant, but it, it definitely pulls you further in. Is that fair to say? Yeah, it's like a tension to it. There's like, there's a friction, there's a tension. It's not like... It, you know, it's not meant to be menacing, but it's really meant to just kind of keep you. I mean, it, like none of this was like we were we didn't sit in the control booth and go, we need to up. You know, it was just like this is the how we we made the song. It's not supposed to be a joyride. You know, it's supposed to feel heavy. It's supposed to feel like these these guys. I mean, the twenty two people that were in that in the video uh, that I hope people look at because it's been very frustrating. It was been it's completely strangled by the algorithm. You know, yeah. and so like it's been almost it's been seen by almost nobody. It's so it's so frustrating, this social media thing, because it's like, I you know, I can put a video out about my cat and get like a million views. But like this incredibly important topic that, you know, all these people donated their time and, and effort to, to make this incredible video that centers these guys. Like I'm barely in it. I didn't want to even be in it. But like I knew I had to be in it a little bit because it's my song. But it centers these guys and the, the play. These guys who were in prison, un, un, wrongfully imprisoned, a total of 500 years between the 22 of them, like 500 years of, 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 of life that was, that was behind bars for no, you know, like for no, they did nothing to deserve that, you know? So it's just, yeah, I'm frustrated. I am frustrated with the, with the system right now, but like, you know, we are doing what I do what I can, I do what I can. And, and bringing in my nephew who is 25, um, who raps over this in the live show 
and bringing in that the context of you know it's not a wasted life like as long as we're saying their names as long as we're you know raising this awareness it's not a wasted life you know so he provides this 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 young counterpoint you know that really i think drives it home so it's it's an important it's an important song to me and an important song for our audience to hear right now so let's listen to a live performance of another wasted life it's Rhiannon giddens here on world cafe <laughs> Another day, another youth Another story, main goal, true The commentary, uncouth And full of cloudy green Does it matter what the crime The torture of the soul, the narrow confines of control. Where do I step that safe? Come out the house where I'm surrounded, looking for pieces, pieces fall in its place. Follow the eyes, the lies, I'm drowning, ice on my shoulder, cries get crowded, crisis every day. I'm way too enticed with how they gon' remember my name. I wanna grow up and know that my kin can love the skin that they in. No need to pretend, the man in the mirror relentless. Hand on my heart, my spirit convinced, the candle goes dark, light gets harder to resist. Words merge like Creole, please don't pardon my French. Time what I worry about, not what I got on my wrist. God on my side, I guard my uncommon sense. I calm myself through song, we grow up relying on this. All of my idols are dead, but truth can save through time. As long as we say their name, that's no wasted life. Things then finally understood. He's returned, but damaged goods. He fought hard as he could until he sought the last relief. Another day, another murder A punishment taken further A surrender without murmur God trust his soul is at peace It's just another wasted life that's not a wasted life. It's just another wasted life. That's not a wasted life. The truth can save through time, and that's not a wasted life. Just another wasted that's life. That's not a wasted life. This truth can save through time. Truth can save through time. It's just another wasted life. That's not a 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 wasted life. That's not a
not a wasted life. This truth can save through time as long as we say their name. That's not a wasted life. That's not a wasted life. That's not a wasted life. The truth can save through time as long as we say their names. Say their names. Say their names. Look, that's not a wasted life. That's not a wasted life. That's not a wasted life. As long as we say their name, the truth can save through time. Truth can save through time. And that's not a wasted life. 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 As long as we say their name, that's not a wasted life. As long as we say their name, as long as we say their name, truth can save through time. And that's not a wasted life. That's not a wasted life. As long as we say their names, say their names. That's Rhiannon and Giddens with a performance of Another Wasted Life here on World Cafe. The song is on her new album, You're the One. Rhiannon's my guest today. I'm Kaleo. This is World Cafe. There's only one featured vocalist uh, on the album, and I know that it was deliberate. Uh, Jason Isbell joining you on Yet to Be. Let's take a moment because I want people to hear you and Jason singing together on the album version of Yet to Be. It's a long, long. From the album You're the One, it's Rhiannon Giddens and Jason Isbell performing together on Yet to Be. Um, why did you want to work with Jason, particularly on this song? Well, Yet to Be is, I wrote that with Marcus Hummond. It was in Nashville. He's a he's a great songwriter. And, you know, he's he's singing on the on the demo, like uh, a harmony. And the, the so I knew we needed that. And then it kind of turned into, well, actually, we need to have a male voice in this because it really is a story about two people. And just thinking about it, you know, um, uh, Jason and I have had never met, have still never met in person, which is hilarious. Really? Yeah, we were like, I I I'm I follow him on Twitter. We're Twitter friends, right? Oh and well, so he's got a he's got a killer Twitter, doesn't he? He's the, literally the best Twitterer. X or whatever you call it, sure. um, and very inspiring the way that he, you know, deals with his his fame and his fan base and his moral compass, you know, and also just knowing what he's been through in his life, and then also seeing how much of an ally he proved to be, you know, in in, in actions as well as words, you know, having the historic, you know, eight uh, women of color opening for him for eight nights, you know, at the Ryman, and just kind of just seeing his universe and going he seems like a super cool dude he's a great musician like maybe like let's see if he would do this with me you know and then he just kind of nailed it kicked it out of the park with with his vocals and it's just it was just a delight um that we were able to do that with the, with the magic of technology <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah and if you could set up the song because we're about to hear uh, a live performance of it what should people know about this song before we get into it I mean, it's a story about, you know, two people from different parts of the world coming together. And it's something that I've always, you know, it's like a black woman in the depression era and a young, and a young Irish lad, you know, comes over and they, and they meet. And it's like, I always talk about how the best of us happens when we come together in, in music and, you know, art and, and the, the, the human condition. But what we also do when we come together from different parts of the world is make babies. And, you know, I'm a mixed baby and that's what happens at the end of the song. And it's like, that's, you know, I just wanted to like celebrate. I wanted to celebrate a little bit, like how much we've gained, you know, in America. Like when my parents got married, it had only been like federally recognized as a legal uh. thing for like three years, you know, which is bananas that we used to have, like some states had laws that based on the melanin in your skin, you couldn't marry somebody else. Like how random is that? You know, well, it's not random, of course, it's very specific, but um, when you look at it scientifically, it makes no sense whatsoever. So sure. I just wanted to celebrate a little bit. And so this has a, a bit of that, like, hey, like, you know, it's we've done some good things. <laughs> like, let's not always talk about the bad things. We have done some good things. Amen. All right, let's, let's get into it right now. This is yet to be recorded live from Rhiannon Giddens here on World Cafe. She was born on a farm, working the clay. She ran off when she was 16. Down a long country road with nowhere to go, she knew that she had to leave. She hopped a one way train with the ticket to ride in the third class back with the others. She watched the farm fade away, just hoping and praying she'd have a better life than her mother's. It's a long Oh. 
mopping the floor. He was working the bar. It was a divine collision of a human heart. It was east of her and west of him. They were wishing on the same bright star. And then the baby was a brand new star. Recorded live, it is Rhiannon Giddens on World Cafe with the performance of Yet to Be, a song from the Grammy winner's new solo album, You're the One. In addition, she's the co-composer of the Pulitzer Prize winning opera Omar, host of My Music with Rhiannon Giddens on PBS, and her podcast with the New York Public Radio, Aria Code, is in its fourth season. And oh yes, her second book, We Could Fly, was just released. That is a lot of projects. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah. When you say it like that, when you like listen like that, I'm like, God, I'm so stupid. <laughs> Have you figured out any life hacks along the way on how to how to manage this all? You know what I don't do? What don't you do? I don't watch Netflix. Like so I watch a little bit, like I'll watch a little, you know, I watch Brooklyn Nine-Nine sometimes with my kids or um, I watch some Italian shows to kind of work on my Italian, but like I don't follow... You know, I, I just, there's, I remember having a moment in my twenties where I was watching TV and I was like, why am I doing this? I could be practicing. And I just turned it off. And that's kind of been the rest of my life since then is that I just, I'm always thinking about this stuff, I guess. I don't think it's a life hack as much as it is, you know, proof of my insanity. <laughs> Cause you, you know, I do, I do have things to relax and I read, you know, I read sort of trashy books or whatever. It's not like I, I'm, I'm trying to say I'm better than anybody no, you got to recharge I, too. I and I do recharge, but I do. Uh, sometimes those things can I kind of take over, 
you know, and, and I find whenever I try to watch a little bit of TV as like, I have about 30 minutes in me, you know, huh. because like my brain is just always constantly ruminating on these other things and I can't focus it. You know, I spent, I remember spending so much of my time thinking about bones and like, I had all the DVDs and I like watched all the episodes and I was so emotionally invested in Bones. Like the, this, U, this... the USA TV series Bones. <laughs> the TV series, right? <laughs> you know, stuff like this where I would be so emotionally invested in these characters. And now I just don't have the energy, you mm -hmm. know? So I just kind of don't try. And, and I don't know if it gives me more time or not, but it definitely conserves some of my focus, you know? And so that's just me. It's not, I don't think oh. it's, I'm better or worse than anybody else. It's just my personal, you know, some people need to watch that stuff so that they can then create other things. That's fine. But for me, I, I find that I just, I, I can't, I can't do it. So where does that creation gene come from? Where is your reservoir coming from? It's coming from books. You yeah. know, I read a lot of uh, historical, not, not historical novels, but like, you know, history books. Um, I'm always reading newspapers. I'm always reading articles. I'm always thinking about these things a little too much. I get a little crazy. <laughs> you know, I'm always like that person at the party that you kind of back away from. You know, it's like, that's that's my that's one of my jokes. Like, you know, you're the person, I'm the person that you don't want to talk to on a Friday night with a <laughs> glass of wine because you're like, oh God, she's going to be bringing up some serious stuff. I don't want to, I don't want to hear about this, you know, but I, I, I don't seem to be able to stop. So I'm going to have to make myself stop at some point because you do burn out, you know? Yeah. Um, so I'm trying to figure out how to do that in a way that feels authentic. I mean, part of that's part of the reason why I crochet, you know, um, I which do has become a big stuff. thing for, for fans. And I mean, you know, the guy at CBS is asking you about crocheting. It's that's not probably what you expected. Hilarious. I'm just like, it's just, people have been doing this for hundreds of years. Like I'm not anything special, but like people are interested in that, you know, because it is a thing that, I don't know. For me, it's something that grounds me because I'm doing something with my hands. I do origami, you know, I draw, you know, that's what I spend my time doing like kind of obsessively. And that helps the juices flow for me is that I have to be doing something all the time that's creating whatever it is. You know, if it's not music, it's something, you know, I am obsessive in that way. <laughs> We're here with the very busy Rhiannon Giddens here on World Cafe. Her new album is You're the One. Okay. So the book, because that did just come out and it, you know, this is your sec second book, uh, a companion to your first build a house. Um, it's called We Could Fly. Um, can you tell me a little bit about it? Yeah, I mean, this is a beautiful thing for me um, because We Could Fly is inspired itself by the, the song is inspired itself by a children's book, which is called The People Could Fly by Virginia Hamilton, illustrated by Leo and Diane Dillon. And it was a collection of African-American folk tales retold by Virginia Hamilton. So I love the kind of full circle of, you know, there I was inspired by this traditional story that was retold by Virginia Hamilton, made into a book, and then wrote the song with Dirk Powell, and then have written this book based on that song. And now it's a children's book. And so I, you know, and it's it illustrated um, so beautifully, too. I'm, I'm so excited, um, this artist. I just think that a children's book should always have the the person who wrote the words we should always be talking about the person who wrote the words and the illustrator kind of in the same breath because you don't have a children's book without both like it's so important to to re be respectful of the images as well as the words and so you know this book we could fly it was illustrated by Brianna Mukodiri Uchindu and her images are just gorgeous way that works is that she just read the words and then was inspired it's not like we sat down and talked about, you know, what they were going to look like. She was inspired by what I wrote based on what Dirk and I wrote based on Virginia Hamilton's words, based on some story that's deep in the African-American consciousness. And that's just a beautiful chain to be a part of. So I'm excited that it's out in the world. Yeah. A, a full circle moment. Yeah, for sure. Um, totally. Uh, we are here with Rhiannon Giddens on World Cafe. The new album is You're the One. And in a perfect bit of synergy that was not at all planned, I want to play the last performance, which is We Could Fly. Uh, originally on the album Freedom Highway, here it is live on World Cafe.
every night she flew I tried to keep her down but there was nothing they could do Recorded live for World Cafe, that is a performance of We Could Fly. The song is on the album Freedom Highway. The new album from Rhiannon Giddens, available now, is called You're the One. Always a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you so much for telling us some of the stories behind the album. And congrats again on the Pulitzer. And uh, please come back and talk to us again soon. Thank you so much. We'll be back in a moment with more World Cafe.